Sandwich. Camera crew. Sandwich. Most mornings you uh, have to put up with my dodgy camera work and sound up on Arthur's seat, but today it's our privilege to be joined by a proper professional film crew. Ben, you're going to do camera. Mm -hmm. Jamie, you're doing sound. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to shadow you today, if you don't mind, because okay. I've been having a real mare with shout sound. <laughs> and your production coordinator today, yeah. this is Kat. So Kat, Jamie, Ben. And first thing we're going to do, Kat, is just actually read out the script. Okay, so yeah, to, see, to see that it's kind of the timing's right and it flows and all of that, that kind of stuff. What are we doing, Ben? We are taking the lines from the iPad Notes app and then we're going to put it into an app that is a teleprompter so no. you can read it whilst it's on the thing. Jamie, I've been having a nightmare with this new mic and wind noise. Yeah. And I tried to noise reduce it, but it's just like... It's like all the bandwidths. Wind noise is probably the only thing that RX can't do. <laughs> it's because the pitch changes and yeah, well, even if, it's kind of pink, isn't it? Yeah, it is pink. And it, if it's one tone or even if it's just two tones, you can paint that out in, in, in RX and in post. But right. wind noise is just so broadband, right. you end up sounding like an alien. <laughs> No, that I did. I sounded like a really nasally alien. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. So what have you brought with you today? We've got a 416 Sennheiser 416 shotgun in here. Is that a kind of a, an industry standard? Yes, yeah, pretty standard. Right. Uh, boom mic shotgun, so it's got great rear and off-axis rejection. Then what does got, that mean? Oh, uh, that means that it's only going to be, it's very highly directional, so it's picking up uh, from the front and then everything on the side and the rear will yeah. be uh, suppressed in volume. Now the fluffy thing isn't, I mean, I always get really surprised when the winch, the, what is it, is it a dead rat or? Uh, yeah, dead, dead cat, yeah. Dead cat. Or badger, I've called it before as well. <laughs> I was surprised when that come off because it actually, you just imagine there to be a kind of a massive kind of capsule and all that, yeah. and, it, and it's just a very long, thin. Yeah, it's, it's, you take this off and it's much, actually, quite a lot smaller than what you have. Right. But you've got the, the breaker inside first. Right. Uh, and then this is the wind jammer. This is the second second stage of yeah. that process. And, and wind jammers really are good. really effective, aren't they? Really effective, yeah. We've got a, a Zoom F8 here. So that's not as industry standard, but it's a new, uh, the sound devices recorders are more uh, Right, which I've got a couple standard. of those. Yeah, yeah interesting. Um, but these F8s are great. I guess aimed more maybe at consumers, but it's got eight mic preamps XLR ins, which is right. quite good for recorder yeah. uh, like this. And it's price point, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's good value. Uh, I'm not trying to say that. Yeah. No, well, I have such a problem with Zoom is because I remember they're kind of, when they hit the market, they hit the market with these awful guitar uh, effects okay, processors that yeah. you wore on your belt. Yeah. I was about in a band that broke up because of a Zoom device. <laughs> so you're saying there's a lav mic as well for me? Yeah. Now, yeah. why do you use two? Depending on the shot, where the camera's positioned and what the framing is of the, uh, the shot, right. we can only get the boom in so close. And okay. sometimes we can get it in really nice and close. So it's boom like your camera A, mic A? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. When you're, when, when mixing uh, afterwards, you'll always favour the boom uh, for right. a whole number of reasons. But, you know, it's a much bigger mic than that tiny lavalier. So it picks up so many more frequencies, much more flat, flatter response. Okay. Whereas the lavs are, are great because they're so small and you can hide them on the, on the person. Yeah. Um, very discreet, but you get them really close. Right. Uh, so a combination of the two sometimes to keep the consistency between shots. It's interesting because... Ben, our cameraman today behind us, is also an editor. So not only do you do, I mean, what's it called? In, in our world, it's called tracking and mixing. And in your world, is it kind of location recording and dubbing? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, I kind of call it mixing as well. I think dubbing is a TV term. Right. As, as far as I understand, and re-recording mixer is maybe the, the film term. Okay. But, um, uh, but you do a mixture of both. I mean, yeah. this is something that's changed, I think, over the last 10 years. Cameraman and editor has been amalgamated into this idea of a videographer mm. who, who does both. And, and you do both as well. Yeah. Um, I, my background is mostly in post. So sound effects, editing, sound design uh, on features and, and TV series and kind of commercials. Um, right. And then of of trained in you know, music and sound recording and that 
you know, sound recording is definitely my background and where right. the education is. So it just gives me an opportunity to get some vitamin D, not be stuck <laughs> in a studio. Good, good for so you. That's the reason. <laughs> well, I also often think that, um, you know, being having experience both at the front and the back end means that you kind of have empathy yes. for, well, one, you know, you, you, get, you get it in post, you kind of understand what they've been through. Yeah. It's been a real eye-opener sound for me. I think, it's the, I think it's a really tricky part of making moving pictures, not least because it's just treated so second class, isn't yeah, it? It's absolutely. like, no, we've got the shot, um, we'll fix it later. Well, that's it, and if you're, uh, if, as, a, as a post mixer, if I heard somebody say, we'll fix it in post, I know it'll be my job, so. Yes. The first thing I'd say is, no, we won't, we'll do it again. So back to the two mics, do you ever use a combination of the two, and is there kind of phasing issues if you do that? Yes, yeah, I mean, most, almost always there'll be some phasing issues. Um, so you try and avoid that? Yeah, I mean, I will, a lot, there is uh, plugins, that do it automatically now, but I don't have those. So I just um, zoom right in, in post, right. align them myself. Um, and most of the time, if you've got a static shot and the subject isn't moving around, once you line up one part, the rest of that take will okay. stay. Uh, and line. could you describe what phasing is, what it sounds like rather? It sounds... A bit phasey. A bit phasey, yeah. A bit <laughs> uh, it's, it's like, a, yeah, it's kind of a, you can really tell as soon as you, if your ears are trained to be able to spot that, you can tell what it is instantly. And it's basically a time delay between two signals where subject is here, there is a time from uh, the subject to this mic, yeah. and then there is a time difference between the subject uh, to I this see. mic. And then of that time difference is, is what gives you the... Uh, this is brilliant. I've been working delay. in the industry for 30 years. I know what phasing is, but don't know what it is. So headphones, yep. Sennheisers again. HD 25s, I believe. Excellent. Um, and are there any kind of like alternatives for the, the Sennheiser that are, that are good, to your knowledge? Or is it just it's such a kind of an industry standard? That is, yeah, that is the standard. It's quite, slightly more expensive. Um, I wouldn't favour using shotguns inside because uh, they sometimes, although they are used inside a lot, um, it can, just because of the directionality, you can get quite a lot of boxy. Oh, I see. So that makes a lot of sense of that yeah, one I was using. So Sherps inside, which yeah, the course. pencil whites are great. great. Um, high quality oil. So we have got here, or if you want to go here or there, there's also um, a lot. Is this, is this good? Yeah, this is this good. Is awesome. I mean, that I think is more interesting than just plain old cloud, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so quickly, Ben, without holding time up, what, what, what kit are you using? You're using a... Uh, so this is a Ronin M, I believe. Yeah, Ronin okay. M and a Sony A7R2. And then this is a 28 to 135 F4 lens. This one, we've used a whole bunch. We used it on uh, Orchestral Swarm. It's like the go-to lens for... I want something to look beautiful. These are very much okay, de rigueur, aren't they? These EW, EW yeah, ones. Yeah, this I've got is a G3, yeah. Okay, yeah, these are good. Today you get a fancy little... Oh, look, fancy that? pads. <laughs> <laughs> we like Jamie because he brings his fancy pads. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the lav mic? What lav mic are we using? That actually is just a Rode. I'm not even sure what it's called. We I have... think they just have the one, don't they? Yeah, Rode's we've, lav we've mic. got some DPAs and some Sennheisers, but this is small enough to fit in our wind cover just in case it gets really windy. So I'm just going to use these overcover sticky, Rycoat stickies for now. I'm just roll it a little bit higher on the boom. Perfect. Okay. And action. Evos are short for evolutions, and the concept came to me whilst eating a sandwich, or rather not being able to eat it. Sorry. But as it turns out, this sandwich has changed composing for Jamie, many years. Sorry. Whilst eating a sandwich, rather not being able to. Whoop. Oh, sorry. Don't worry. So I overheard chaps you talking about doing chin-ups and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is uh, you know when looking at you holding, I mean, I, I know that you've got a heavy camera, Ben, mm -hmm. but also just the, holding the boom, Jamie's. Yeah. Is it? Is it? I mean, I, we had a sound girl once who fell through shot, fainted. Oh wow. Because of the physical ex exertion, it was with Patrick Doyle. 
Yeah, I think we've still got that cat on camera somewhere. She really kind of whacked her head on the floor. So is kind of physical fitness or, you know, building up your kind of muscle mass yeah. important? Well, if you look, if you ever have a chance to see the guys that do question time or the girls that do question time, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty muscly. <laughs> pretty muscly. Wow. <laughs> That's probably, I mean, the quick... The, the, the reach over the audience in mm -hmm. question time always astounds me. There's a, a natural tension of you needing to get the mic as close to, to the presenter as possible, the source, yeah. but keeping out of shot, yeah, and particularly with a move, moving shot. Yeah, so it's, you know, a lot of the job isn't just uh, technical and making it sound right, it's navigating the relationship with whoever's filming it and being able to not annoy them and keep getting in their shot, but then... yeah. Get, make it sound as good as possible and you know just navigating that yeah. throughout the day and also i imagine would you refer to it as i mean in tv kind of uh, reportage they're called contributors but the general term is with the talent yeah not that i'm talented at all <laughs> um uh, uh, with the talent there's also must be attention there if they've delivered a good take yeah absolutely. and it's like booms in shot yeah exactly if it's a film thing i'm sure they'd say oh we'll just paint it out in post <laughs> yeah. um, with things like this it's not quite as uh Easy as that. No, we've just had everything painted out by the ha. So it's a motorised gimbal, this? Yeah, yeah. And it's, now, it's... What, you, what were you shooting just then? Uh, just a little bit of the grass going up, so I'll reverse that so that that matches the... Uh, okay. And is that what you'd call B-roll? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's just... <laughs> little bit I mean, to... I kind of think I know what B-roll means, but, but what is it? Uh, so B-roll is essentially uh, extra footage that you get that sets the scene. You can use it to... You can use it to break up, you know, if there's a fluffed line or right. if there's a wobble in your shot. You can use it to patch things. Or that switch have... between takes that you prefer. Yes, exactly. Started well, to... ended badly, etc. Yeah, you can use it to patch up things. Or I like to think of it more as a scene setting, because right. I think that's really important in... Uh... The old Huxtable shot. Yes. Are you familiar with that phrase? Uh, I've, I've heard you matter... Hello. I've heard it's you, exterior uh, of a house where yeah. the situation is taking place and it's taken from the well it's the name that shouldn't be mentioned anymore but it's taken from the Cosby show uh, which famously began every scene with a shot of outside of the house uh, the Huxtable shot and the, the Cosby show the family the fictional family were called the Huxtables well we'll just retrace our yeah, steps yeah, yeah, okay. so, that's really weird it's all right we're not in glasgow we should be okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, no. apologies to ouija's fortunately for three of us we've now done all the talky bits outside for ben he's going to do more b-roll and some drone stuff the ha just never eased off so the kind of backdrop of us being on a tall volcano in edinburgh uh, hasn't really paid off but it has a kind of a moody arthurian quality which will suit the library that i'm promoting i think one of the hardest things of this is well rather the the, the biggest learning curves for me has been to talk directly into a camera naturally as if it's a person um, it's taken me a good couple of years to get used to it but this is the first time I've done something like this for Spitfire since Tundra which is the first time I'd ever spoken into a camera um, and it feels nice to have progressed a kind of quite an odd skill to learn but it's nice to have kind of gone oh yeah I am better at that now I still find it hard to memorize stuff my parents are actors and uh, they didn't pass down that gene and what Kat's been doing because we basically do it in little segments it's all scripted and Kat you've been like kind of monitoring the tone the pace not only how yeah. fast I'm speaking but also how fast I'm walking so there's consistency <laughs> yeah I've just been kind of checking that we're getting everything we need. Excellent. Checking no one's trips over. Yeah. And there was a nice point because I, I slightly improvised the script so it sounds more natural. Yeah. And there's um, there was a point where you noticed that I'd said bunch and you go, well, actually, later on you say bunch. So you said bunch a bunch of times, yeah. Excellently. So, <laughs> so I changed it to group, not bunch. Awesome. Are we on schedule, Kat? Yeah. Actually, I think we're ahead of schedule, so. Good. Awesome. So, doing setting up shop for interior see how the professionals work so is that uh is that a, a compatible lens or does it have a, a, a mount uh no this is a this is a sony lens, oh, sony lens the, right. yeah yeah and it's uh you know it matches quite closely to what canon offer but as we use kind of almost exclusively sony's quite a lot then okay it's how much handy. is a lens like that quite a bit sandwich 
camera crew. Sandwich, dirty sandwiches. Film crew, not a very good sandwich stand. Dirty floor. Had a wrap? That's that a wrap. That is a wrap. That's a wrap. Fantastic. Well done, guys. Very good. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. If you want to be notified the next time I put a... Uh, it's a video I think I'm making here. Um, I'm just checking the microphones on. Uh, ding that bell. And if you've liked what we've done today, not that you've got to see any of it, um, behind the scenes, uh, give us a like. See you next time.